Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kalin. Today I'd like to talk about Kruskal's algorithm for finding minimum spanning trees. The basic approach here is this. First, we're going to sort the edges of the tree. Just take all our edges and sort them by weight, smallest to largest. Then we're going to have a forest of trees, each that has one vertex. So we're going to have V trees with zero edges, one vertex. Then until we're down to just one tree or we run out of edges, if the vertices for the next edge in the list are not in the same tree, so the two vertices at the ends of the edge are in two different trees, we're going to add that edge to our minimum spanning tree and connect those two trees. So to actually make this work, we're going to need disjoint sets where our vertices are the objects in the sets. And we're going to use union by size to facilitate recognizing when the tree is complete. So each time we're joining two trees with the edge we've just added to the minimum spanning tree, we're going to union the sets that those two vertices are in. Here's an initial state. We've taken all of the edges in our tree and sorted them by weight. And we've set up a disjoint set array with minus one for each of the items to indicate that each of them is in their own tree. Each of them is the root of the tree representing the set. We're going to start the process and take our first edge off the list. So we're going to take AC and we're going to look at the disjoint set array at A and C and see whether or not they're in the same set. And of course here at the beginning they're in different sets. So we're going to add that edge to our minimum spanning tree and we're going to do the union of our disjoint sets. So now in our loop conditions, we're going to check that union we just did to see if we're down to just one set, which of course at this point we're not. We would also stop if we actually ran out of edges, which would indicate that our graph wasn't actually connected. So our next edge to handle is going to be BD. We look at those two in the disjoint set and see that they're in different sets. So we union those and add BD to our minimum spanning tree list. That did not complete all of our tree. So we keep going handling HJ. Those are in different sets. So we do that union, add that edge to our tree. Still haven't finished. So we move on to the next edge, CG. Those are in different sets. So we're going to add that edge to our tree and do that union. Still haven't finished. So we move on to edge FJ. Those again are in two different sets. So we're going to do that union, adding that edge to our minimum spanning tree. Still haven't finished. So we take a B. Those again are in two different sets. So we're going to add that to our minimum spanning tree and do that union in our disjoint set array. Still not finished. So now we're going to handle edge GJ. G is in set zero, J is in set six. So once again, they're not in the same set. So we do the union, adding that edge to our tree. And this actually finishes things. When we go to check our loop, we see that that set got us to eight items, which is how many we had. We have eight vertices in this graph. So our spanning tree is complete and we can get the list of edges by looking at all the edges we put into the tree, which in this case is all of the edges we looked at. And of course we can get our cost, which is once again 20, just as it was with Prime's algorithm, by simply adding up the cost of the edges. Now in this case, as will sometimes be true, all of the edges were the first 
V minus one edges we looked at. But that's not always true. So I wanna quickly show you a slightly different scenario and show you what would happen if we had a situation where in fact we looked at an edge that didn't belong in the minimum spanning tree. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the point where we were adding those last, that last edge. I'm going to flip the costs of DG and GJ so that DG is four and will come before GJ at five. So that would mean the next edge we would look at when we were at this stage of the process would be DG. So when we look at DG, D is in set zero. G is also in set zero. So we see they're in the same set. That means we're simply going to discard that edge and ignore it. Then we would move on, look at edge GJ, add it to our minimum spanning tree, and be done. Obviously, this requires some understanding of disjoint sets. But once you have that down, Chris calls is really fairly simple. I hope you can see that from this demonstration. Thanks for watching. See you next time.